the Wang Perun, those of us who remember the Wang Perun regime, um, as a member of the intelligentsia, as a matter of academia, who spoke out against tyranny, um, he was promptly shown the door or be arrested and probably never seen again. Um, he headed to the United States at that time um, and um, developed great relationships with people like um, Aaron Copeland, if you've ever heard of Aaron Copeland. If you haven't, Aaron Copeland is one of the great influencers of a guy named John Williams. If you haven't heard of John Williams and you've never seen Star Wars or Superman or E.T. or any of those things. Um, Aaron Copeland really created music of the American West in terms of classical music. Well, Hina Stera was really an influence for him in terms of classical West music in Argentina, cowboy music, um, uh, would have been the gaucho music of South America. Um, because of that, he's a very classical composer, and those that are more studied in music will notice that there's classical elements in his music, while he's very, very progressive in terms of what the harmonies, I'm gonna get in the weeds a little bit here, and the harmonies. So it's, it's what we call just weird. There's a lot of really weird stuff in this. Um, to speak to, and I'll come back to that in a minute, to speak to the actual um, text of Lamentations of Jeremiah. Uh, you know, it's in the Bible, um, Lamentations, but to explain to you a little bit about that. So, there's an expression or a, a word used um, in literature called a Jeremiah. Jeremiah is when you um, have a room full of people and you say, things are getting really bad and we've got to do something about this. It's a lament. Um, you, maybe, you've been, maybe you've been there, maybe you have that. Hopefully it won't happen over Thanksgiving if you're family, but, right? <laughs> but uh, those moments, and that was what Jeremiah the prophet did. Um, when you read Lamentations, what's interesting about it is um, Jeremiah wrote these, um, talking about the fall of Jerusalem, the Babylonian exile. So for the Jews, that's what's really relevant to them in the text. For Christians, they look at um, the writings of Lamentations and think about the passion and death of Christ. Uh, for Hinastera, um, he used it as a commentary on what was going on in his own country, in his home country of Argentina, um, seeing the death and destruction um, that was there. Um, but you don't even have to think about all those things. We've all lived these moments in our lives. Um, if you look at the three movements in Lamentations that Hinastera uses, the first movement, the Ovos Omnes, is traditionally written musically, very mournful, very quiet. Hinastera does a completely different approach to it. It's anger, it's fury, it's rage. You're going to hear screams, you're going to hear shouts in this. It's a very impassioned um, rage uh, that, that you'll see in this first movement. It's very uh, atypical of settings. So think of that in the first movement. Think of rage, shock, and anger. Second movement, the Ego of your is despair. Um, I mean, you look at some of the words that are in here, especially the, the idea that, you know, but whenever I cry out, he shuts out that prayer. That moment where we think we're not being heard, we're not, you know, our prayers aren't being answered. So you hear the mournfulness of this. And then the third movement, the Recordare, is hope. It's pleading and hope or something that's going to be better. This piece is written as an eight-part acapella piece. What that means is it's unaccompanied. And that means that there are, in this group, eight different sections of music that are going to be singing very complex things, very intense harmonies. I also want to make mention, how many of you is this your first semester in choir here? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's worth it. And so I said to them, let me give you one of the hardest pieces you can do for choir. <laughs> and they looked at me like, you got to be crazy. And the amazing thing was that they never thought they would actually do this and have it memorized. I think that's what you're going to notice that's really impressive about it too as well. So I think I blabbed that up about it. I really hope that you enjoy it. I would have you kind of look at the pieces if you can see them in dark um, and, and the translations of it. But if you don't, just think about the first movement being anger and rage. The second movement being almost a sense of despair. And then the third movement, this sense of hope and pleading. Uh, this is The Lamentations of Jeremiah by Alberto Hinastero.